put it on. All right, if you'll all take a seat, we can get started. We don't have a presentation tonight, but we do have some reports. Oh, there you all are. I see you. All right. Welcome. My name is Linda Locke, president of the BCAC. It's so dark and cold tonight. It's like, so, oh, here we are. I've got it. It's so dark and cold tonight. It's kind of strange to be out here, isn't it? So I'm Linda Locke, president of BCAC. We'll get started. Uh, I don't think, um, Ty, you don't have a report for tonight for the, is that what you said? <laughs> no minutes. Yeah. We keep, we keep them pretty busy. Okay. Uh, not available. Okay. And Susan, did she come in? I thought I saw her come in. Oh, there you are. <laughs> the treasurer's report. Hi, everybody. The treasurer's report for the month. Yeah. It's a little recording. I was going to practice my loud talking. <laughs> so the treasurer's report for October 2022. So we have a beginning balance on October 1st of $3,283.86. We had income of membership due payments, $45. I know the five seems off, but I allowed somebody to pay for half a year. And then expenses of $18.72. And then we have an ending balance on October 31st of $3,310.14. So in the city of San Jose District 4 grant, we have $10,000. There were no um, added income or expenses. City of San Jose Cycle 4 grant. Well, that doesn't make sense. We have a district. Oh, the District 4 grant it was a $10,000. In the city of San Jose Cycle 4 grant, um, that has a balance of $5,000 on October 1st. There is no income, added income or expenses, so it's $5,000. And then the Nada Noble Charter, the beginning balance on October 1st was $15,102.16. There were no expenses for October. The ending balance for Nada Noble Charter, October 31st, 2022 is $15,102.16. Thank you. Oh, so I do have an update. There's a cycle five, the city of San Jose grant that BCAC um, put in an application for in the amount of $5,000. Um, so the projects that we had picked, our parks need a lot of help. And I know we keep going back at it, but the most simplest, like less tangled politically, we could get something done is we're asking to add one or two benches to Cataldi Park and then through the Penitencia, multiple branches, which goes all the way up to the percolation ponds, garbage cans that we hope if it's approved will be painted by the students of the Berryessa School. So that's the hope. And if we get the grant approved, we will let you guys know. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, great. So oh, that's helpful. <laughs> okay, very nice. Thank you. You know, the um, on on Capitol where the light rail is, where the benches are, um, those tiles that are on those benches were from Cherrywood School years ago, whenever they got put in there. So, and that was Pat Stillwagon insisting that uh, you know the kids be part of uh, the the construction of the, that stop area, as long as there was going to be benches anyway. So, 
So though, if you ever get a chance to go look at those, it's pretty cool. So now the police and the sheriff are not here yet. And the highway patrol told me he was coming. So when they get here, we'll, we'll get to them, I guess. So tonight we will go right down to officials and assembly member Alex Lee and Jariah Jung. Oh, how I first ruined your name. Okay, what? Okay. Tim, Tim what? And like, but that's not hers, right? So don't enter, don't confuse me. I'm already giving. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, I'll be brief. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> I hope everyone's staying warm. So I just have some brief updates for everyone. So Thursday and November 1st, we had a Cash for College webinar. So if you know any college seniors who need information on where to get financial aid or how to fill out the FAFSA and any California grants, we have that on our website. It's a webinar so they can go back and watch it. And we also finished our 2021 to 2022 legislative session and the assembly member was able to pass 10 bills. So two of them, one, one AB 2949 exempts veterans from paying tolls on bridges, which is one of them, and AB 2164 increases ADA compliance and disability access, so it provides a grants for businesses to gain access to funding to be compliant for ADA laws, so those are two of the highlights. And I'm not sure if I mentioned to this group, but the assembly member also secured 10 million for uh, Piedmont Middle School, so he presented the other couple of weeks ago to the school board and so we brought a big check it was really fun and <clears throat> he's been just check presenting throughout the district so it's been really exciting and I also just wanted to mention that open enrollment for Medi-Cal and Covered California is open. So November 1st through January 31st, you can go ahead and apply online. And we don't have any office hours for November or December, but we are going to start accepting applications for or nominations for our Unsung Heroes event happening in January. Oh no, it's gonna happen in April, but we're gonna start opening those nominations. So if you know anyone, who you want honored from our district, you know, you can go on our website and nominate someone. And just a tiny update for myself, I'm actually uh, leaving Assembly Member Lee's office, so I won't be giving these updates anymore, but I'll be moving to Council Member Cohen's office. I don't know if I'll still be here to give updates for him. Tim is also here, but this is my last report from the Assembly Member's office. So someone else will be taking my position or you'll have Honorog back. So uh, just a quick thank you for you all being so kind and wonderful to me. I'll still be coming to these, but I probably won't be speaking up here to give a report. So that's everything for me. So thank you. Thank you. We also, uh, I should have recognized uh, Jiraiya for having won the election for her school board seat for the Berryessa Union School District. So a little more work for you. Okay, now Senator Rykowski, uh, his outgoing, uh, Message, Tim Marasco. <laughs> so everyone, good evening. Um, this is bittersweet at one end, uh, and that is um, Senator Wykowski will be leaving uh, the state Senate on November 30th. So you all voted for a new Senator. Senator Wykowski was termed out. Uh, and he wants to thank you all for your contributions to the community, to Berryessa. He says, continue, you know, tell them to continue to do the good work. And I said, they will. And so, um, but he does want to thank, he said, it's been a privilege over the last 12 years in the assembly and in the Senate. So, um, so he's on his way out. Uh, you will have a new Senator. Uh, they will be, you know, it takes 30 days uh, for the secretary of state to certify elections. Uh, and then on December 5th, I believe that's a Monday, right, Jariah, that um, the new legislators, all the assembly members and the senators will be sworn in at the state capitol. That's December 5th. And then the new legislative session begins anew in January on that Wednesday, the first week. So that's the Senate side. And, and I want to thank you. You know, it's a, I don't, I'm not going to get teary eyed or anything with this, but, um, but it's, uh, I came. Uh, January 23rd, well, at the end of 2012, back from San Diego and um, got hired by the office. <laughs> and it's been, a, you guys have been great. It's been a great run. 
uh, you know, to serve my own community where I grew up and um, to be with Bob for the last 10 years. So um, it's been great doing the reports for Bob over the last 10 years. So that's that and that's a, a farewell on that side. And then like Taraya, um, I'm gonna be working with the new, with our councilman, David Cohen. So I'm excited. Uh, so this is gonna be some great fun. So I'm gonna be doing some of the same type of work, uh, the community relations um, for the councilman. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, so I have a report now for council member David Cohen. So <laughs> as his representative. Um, so there's a few things. Uh, one is there's a pajama drive. I believe the school district is aware of that. Um, and so, you know, it's getting cold right now during these wintry months. The kids need pajamas. They need some warm sleeping attire. So uh, if you'd like to donate, you can go to the school district office off uh, across the street from Piedmont Hills and you can donate there, drop off uh, the donations. Um, you're also, you can give cash donations, gift card donations. And if you'd like to do that, call the office. And I have my business card with me. So um, I'll get, make sure you have the council members of uh, business, my business card. Also, we just opened an Alviso Community Garden. And so I'm, there's a lot of great programs with the city. So I'm learning, right? And, um, uh, and a couple of weeks, weekends ago, the Alviso Community Garden was open, Dick Santos. Uh, there's, uh, I think, 28 plots that, that are affordable, rentable for folks who want to uh, garden their own vegetables and so forth. I think it's a great program for city residents. Um, I was told over a thousand residents today participate uh, in city gardens uh, throughout the, the city. So, Alviso, no longer forgotten, Dick Santos. Um, there's a lot of good things going on in, in Alviso. So the Alviso Community Garden, uh, D4 Parks. The councilmen and the staff are working with uh, the maintenance crews and the capital projects teams for uh, uh, parks and rec. Um, and, and we're working to improve our parks to make sure that we have more parks in the community, especially D4. And so we wanna tell you that the Brazoni Park, the Mercado Park, you know, scheduled out there by the Safeway and the BART area, um, that they're all, they're all on track, including our own Penitentia Creek Dog Park. So that's on track as well. So just know that, you know, we wanna make sure that D4 has, <laughs> has its share of resources when it comes to city parks. The other thing, uh, North San Jose, um, the chief was telling me that we're working to finalize an agreement with the county to build more housing in North San Jose, both affordable and market rate, because as you all know, there's little housing in this town and this is one of the reasons why we have these um, skyrocketing prices, one of the reasons. So um, we're working hard to ensure that there's housing development in North San Jose. And then um, I could tell you EIH, emergency interim housing, right? So the VTA property on North Zanker has uh, been identified as the preferred location. Uh, so, and there'll be many community meetings. So you're gonna be aware of these Wednesday meetings, um, but that's the preferred location spot now for both um, housing and safe parking, right? So let's work to make sure that this happens, right? I mean, we didn't want in our neighborhood, but let's make sure that this happens for those unhoused in our district. And then I was told, uh, you all know Lamb in our office, and he said, we're gonna have a ribbon cutting for the new mural by the BART, over, uh, under the BART overpass. So everyone knows where the BART overpass is, Berryessa Road, because there's a mural. And so there we'll, we'll, we'll keep you informed about that sometime in December. So a lot of things going on in D4. I'm excited to be on board. I'm excited Jariah is joining us. And um, is it gonna be a good 2023? Uh, question for Tim. I think the council member, I can say, um, it, it will work to make sure that it's a more developed park. So there are some types of parks in the city where um, you have benches and, you know, little pathways. And so um, uh, we'll make sure that that happens. So it, it is more developed than what it is today. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
I had a question for Tim, is that possible? That was a good question. All right, Santa Clara Valley Water District, Richard Santos. Raise your hand. Oh, I, oh, maybe I didn't raise my hand. Well. Good evening, I'm Richard Santos, your director of the Santa Clara Valley Water District. Of course, everybody's busy. Um, first thing, we have a call, of, I have about 11 committees and uh, one of them is called the uh, Environmental Water Resources Committee. So if you're interested in getting on, just come and see me because we'd love to have folks in our district, which is District 3, which is District 4. So it gets a little confusing. Um, I think a couple of folks sent me some information about the tiny homes proposal here a while back and the attorneys. So thank you for all the information. It's always helpful. And it's, and it's really good to see a community come together and make the good decisions. Uh, in terms of... Um, the unhoused, um, <clears throat> it's uh, getting more restrictive with the uh, control of disease center. They've put more restrictions on us. And so what it's come down to is that <clears throat> we just got through, it's your tax money. We had to give to the city of San Jose PD, $400,000 a year extra just to protect our employees and just to have people protected and people to go enjoy the creeks. So that's how difficult it really is. It doesn't mean that everybody is a criminal, doesn't mean everybody is bad, but there's enough to go around. They need to be taken care of, the warrants that I can go on. And our employees go out there, gunshots, dog bites, needles. So it's a real serious issue. And uh, your eyes and ears are helpful when you call these stuff in. And by the way, yeah, we're all happy right now. We had a little rain, but that's just a little bit. <clears throat> yeah. But thanks to all you folks, you do a 15 and 16% savings which has been very very good but remember we're still in the drought it's still an emergency and again i got mine i'm 78 let's make sure your grandkids have water that's what we gotta do i can go on all night there's a lot of things going on uh people voted i think in around 20 percent here in this district not good you should all participate it's a free country it's a democracy exercise it whether your candidate wins or not get out there and vote so the folks that we don't want we can get rid of and the people we like we can hope we can keep um, the uh, creek cleanup uh, had a chance to review our policy <clears throat> and I changed some things around because people think that the Santa Clara Valley Water District, which your tax money goes to, that we own all the creeks. It's not true. It never was true. We own one third. The rest is owned by the city of San Jose, the county, and San Jose Eastside School District and private owners. So I decided to change some of the things. With your permission, we send letters out saying, you need to clean your stuff up. You need to get off your duffs and do the job. We're not gonna use tax money to help you out unless you need help with the permits and other things. And if, there's good, and if there is flooding due to your negligence, you will be held accountable. So we gotta change things around and make sure because as you know, after droughts, and I hope it happens, but not a flood, but we get a lot of rain. So we gotta be prepared. Um, I know it's going to be something I'll forget, and I'll say, why didn't I say it? And let me just think. <clears throat> yeah, we cleaned up 4810. There's something like 24 uh, projects during th this year finishing out. That's just cleaning up creeks. That's how much it is. And then when the city of San Jose and the FAA got together and all the folks get out of Columbus Park, where do you think they come? And I've been through all that stuff before, and uh, that's not the answer. But see, money talks, and the other part I can... But better language, I won't say. <clears throat> but um, those are the things. Oh, let me see here. Oh, and then we also, when taking your tax money, we give it to the city of San Jose for the cash and trash a project. It's $80,000. It seems to be working. Unfortunately, the root of all evil is money. So it seems to work a little bit. Anytime you need any questions, I'm available 724. You pay for my cell phone, I answer it. Thank you. Sure. Since I walk by the ponds and a lot of us do, um, I was wondering, uh, there doesn't seem to be a rhyme and a reason for water to be let out and then uh, it to be dry, one or two ponds to be dry, and then all of a sudden, you know, two months later, the water comes back in. Explain, can you explain that very briefly? 
when the state of California decides to send some water out, we get it. When they say not to, and we do a maintenance work, that's the way it goes. On that same note, anytime you folks want to do any volunteering out there or get clean up, whatever, let me know. We'll pick it up. We'll help out. But in the meantime, we're doing all the projects anyway. That comes and goes. Remember, as the, as the Bob grows ponds, when we're not doing maintenance work and we get enough water, then we send it over to the penitentiary pond right here. Without that, you wouldn't get it. And the city of San Jose and the county have to take care of the maintenance. But the water is provided by us when we have enough. And it's gravity fed. And so um, the water comes and goes. And uh, it's a South Bay aqueduct, which is owned by the state of California. And they decide, here's your allocation. So when you get it, we use it. There is no extra water, unfortunately. So it comes and goes. And we do have a chance. And by the way, on that same note, we have also told us, uh, and the uh, David Cohen's office knows that we're still interested in using your money to purchase the rest of that land and preserve it for the rest of our lives. So put the pressure on David Cohen's office and make him represent us. Thank you. What? One man. A question? Sure. That's good. Uh, Barry as a district superintendent, Dr. Roxanne Fuentes. Doesn't seem to do any good. Yeah. You can write to her. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to see all of you. So we have several uh, good news announcements that I want to share. First, um, at our last board meeting, uh, we did give our thanks to um, Trustee Kansen Chu as he completes his appointment of service at the Berryessa Union School District. As many of you know, he was a former uh, school board trustee uh, several years ago. And so we were definitely appreciative of his willingness and interest to come back when council member Cohen left us to be council member for the city of San Jose. So it was a difficult time when uh, trustee Chu came on board, given we were just in the heart of the pandemic and dealing with all of those challenges with our students and families. So so we appreciate and give gratitude to his service and wanted to be sure I threw another uh, shout out of thanks to him. And then, of course, congratulations to our new trustee. We look forward to bringing in uh, Jariah into the school board at our next meeting in December is when she'll be sworn in and begin her duty to our students and to school district community. I uh, did want to share that the board did take action uh, last October to change our board meetings from Tuesday to Wednesdays. So want to be sure everyone knows our school board meetings are now every second Wednesday of the month. You're welcome to attend in person and, and come join us over on P off of Piedmont Road. In addition, uh, we're very grateful for all of our community partnerships. As Jariah mentioned, we were recently awarded $10 million to Piedmont Middle School to build a brand new gymnasium and completely retrofit all of the windows throughout the school. So we're really grateful for his advocacy in us receiving that state grant because now what that does is that puts $10 million back into our bond program that we can spread across the rest of our schools. And so we always want to give our appreciation to the community who supported Measure U. And of course, now to Assemblymember Lee, so we can continue to spread those dollars around for school facility improvements. In addition to that, um, we had a lot of fun a few weeks ago with the 49ers. Berryessa School District was recipient of a um, uh, of a, a health and fitness grant. It was called a, a home 49ers home grant in partnership with the California Dairy Council. So we were awarded ten thousand dollars to um, put towards healthy living. Um, you know, to encourage the students for healthy eating, as well as physical fitness. We had a special guest visitor um, of Sourdough Sam, who came by and rallied the kids and presented us with the $10,000 check. So that was a ton of fun. In addition, uh, we had uh, Stevens Creek Subaru 
also that same week donated $10,000 to Sierra Mont Middle School and divided that $10,000 to every single teacher at that school for any type of instructional supplies that they needed for their students. So we've been very blessed this past month and I just can't say how much the board and I appreciate our community's generosity. Um, and I know uh, it all goes directly towards our students' benefit and you know we thank Thank you for that. In addition, uh, this past um, month, test scores, state test scores were released. And uh, we had um, done a review of our test scores with our board. We'll be doing another one probably in January. So we did see for Berryessa students in language arts, we actually saw an increase of 1% in uh, reading, reading and comprehension. We'll take that given the challenges of distance learning and all of that. So we still saw growth for our students. In mathematics, we did have a slight decline of a few percentage points. But what I do want to share is this past two weeks, the comparative data was released, which allowed us to see, given all of the challenges, how did we perform in comparison to the state and to the county. And I'm pleased to share that our students performed above both the state and county averages in both language arts and mathematics. So is there still room for improvement? Absolutely. And we'll continue to utilize our resources to help our students that were struggling, but very pleased to see that we had a lot of anticipation wanting to see, you know, um, you know, where our efforts were going to land. And so we're definitely thankful for our teachers, our support staff and our school principals who worked so hard these past two years with our students and their families. So just to give you an idea for English language arts, the state average was 47%. Santa Clara County's average was 60.6%. Berryessa's average was 66.15%. In mathematics, the state average was 33.38%, so not too well for the state of California. Santa Clara County was 51%, and Berryessa Union was close to 55%. So as I said, lots of work for all of the schools for us to do with our children, but we certainly um, are glad to see all of our efforts pay off for our students here in the Berryessa community. And in addition to that, just again, want to thank all of you uh, for supporting our schools, for supporting our students. We're having the pajama giveaway. Uh, there's a box in the lobby. So if you find yourself wanting to donate, please feel free to come through. We're thankful to Council Member Cohen's office for that support. He gave away well over there, I think almost 300 pumpkins for uh, Halloween and the harvest time. And so that was always a, a a nice gesture for for our students so thank you and we want to wish all of you a happy thanksgiving next week all of our schools and our district office will be closed for that holiday so thank you very much thank you uh, dr fuentes it's it's just great to hear all the recognition that Berryessa was getting, because a lot of times they, they talk about San Jose, but it's either San Jose Unified or Franklin McKinley. And it's like, what about us, you know, over here? So that was just great. All of a sudden, all three came together. So it's, it's just amazing. We should be very proud of our school district. Okay. And I see that Captain Treyer came in. So we're happy to see you tonight and you can come up. He's been very busy, so I'm so excited to hear about all your okay. things. <laughs> I'll try and make it fun. Yeah. Thank you. It is super busy right now. So I, I'm sorry I'm late. I had another meeting, but we just had a shooting also. So I had to go by there and make sure everyone's going to be okay. I think they will. And it's nowhere near here. So don't worry about that. Uh, my name's Todd Trayer. I'm the captain for this division, if I haven't met you before. Um, thanks for having me. Um, my division goes from Milpitas down to Evergreen. It's about, I, I round up to 300,000 people. Um, the officers are working super hard tonight. 
but Saturday night was a good example of phenomenal work by the officers. As you might know, I run the, I call it the red team, which is the uh, sideshow enforcement. And we see it a lot up the hill, right? Um, I, I, I'm in charge of that team. So basically I try and give them whatever resources it takes to get them what they need to do great work. Well, uh, Little Birdie told us that there was gonna be a sideshow in San Jose. They haven't been here since July. Um, at one point when I first became a captain two years ago, they came almost every weekend. So we had, we've had a big break since July, but this Saturday they decided to come to San Jose. They came from mostly other cities. I haven't um, gone through all the tickets yet because I'll tell you how many there were. There were 720 tickets. So we stopped every car that was part of the sideshow that we could. And we cited everyone who participated in watching the sideshow. They were called spectators. The city council approved an ordinance that let us cite, lets us cite every person that's part of that. So 720 tickets is a tremendous amount. It took us about nine hours to do that. The entire swing shift was on it. They all volunteered to stay over. Um, they normally get off at one o'clock, but they stayed over. When I came in at five in the morning, I saw many of them until eight in the morning writing their reports and just being diligent for the work that they did. I'm very proud of them. It sends a very clean message that you don't do that in our city and that we will come after you. And we are looking at the promoter. I wrote a law with the city to, to be able to go after the promoter and hold them accountable, the person that makes the party happen. And I've always said that the two years I've been with you and we've done it and we are looking at the promoter of that event and we are looking to see if we can go after that promoter and charge that person or persons with every dollar, every tax dollar, your money that was spent to make that happen. Because not only does it take away the money from you, but it takes away the cops to go to your house calling 911. And to me, that's a really big deal, right? Um, we're limited on what we have already and we don't need to be uh, wasting your money and time, our time on that. Okay, enough of the sideshow thing, but I am proud of the cops. The 720 tickets, there was a robbery. We did recover a gun. We wrote 83 or 82 juvenile citations also for juveniles. And most of the citations from what I can see so far, they were in a big box. Um, they were from out of town. So uh, that is, um, I don't know what that means other than to tell you it isn't necessarily your or my kids. Um, it definitely isn't my kids because I have an alarm on my house. <laughs> but they did great work. Um, in your area here, I, there was one accident. It was on um, White Road or Piedmont, actually Piedmont, just north of Noble, if I'm pointing the right way, um, where someone was, um, mine, it was a minor injury accident. I always report out to you the accidents that happened because it's a big priority to me. Um, we did not have any fatalities, knock on wood, and we did not in, in the entire division for, uh, during this time. And we also um, didn't have a whole string of major accidents. I'm taking it deeper now though. I'm looking at your area and I'm figuring out why accidents are happening. And sometimes I don't know. And if I don't know, I can't read the report and figure it out for some reason. I get a hold of DOT, Department of Transportation. I ask them to go out and look. They're doing that at four different spots for me. And one of them is uh, Piedmont and um, Piedmont Berryessa here. I just wanted to look at it and tell me why so many people crash there? Does the light take too long? I don't know. They know that stuff, right? I just know how to write tickets. Um, there, there are a couple burglaries. I wanted to talk to you about it in the area. It was um, November 11th and November 13th. And if you go to sjpd.org and you want to see the more, the more exact areas, you can look at them. But they're kind of off a of Sierra Road area. And the reason why it bothers me is because um, when I put this stuff together for you, I can see if there's trends. In this case, I saw one silver vehicle was involved and my cops already know this stuff. And there were three suspects. So the three suspects went to your back window, the slider, because we all have one, and they smashed the back window and they went into your house and they're getting stuff. And there's minimal amount of video because it's usually from neighbors or the house itself, but we don't have a lot of leads on it. And that always happens when it gets dark like this. So um, it's getting darker earlier, and even though it's cold, people still want to still want to steal your stuff. Um, you know, just remember, uh, it being dark outside is an issue. Um, how you fortify your house, how you choose to do that, either with cameras, if you're if you have that ability, it's great. If you have an alarm, that's great. Um, but uh, make sure everything's working, and make sure if you hear an alarm or you see something strange in for your neighbor's house, call nine one one. Don't call three one one. Call nine one one. 
let us decide if it needs to go that way or that way. Um, because right now, if you call and say there's a silver strange car in front of my neighbor's house, it's probably going to go that way. Okay, everybody knows that we're that we're kind of keeping our eyes open for that. Fortunately, nobody's been home. It's not a hot prowl burglary. But do you tell any of those two people that got their houses burglarized, they're, they've been violated. All right, it's, it's a terrible feeling if you've ever had that happen. So we do care. Um, there's been a lot of patrol checks up on the hill, um, which has led to some good police work. Um, you have the same officers out here until May. They are, um, I can't say favorite officers because I'll get in a lot of trouble. They are the most proactive officers I have ever seen in my 27 years on this department. They pull ghost guns off the street every week. Um, I trained them in the police academy. Uh, I have given them awards and they are your cops here. Um, I would bring them here. They start work at nine o'clock at night and they work until six in the morning, till seven in the morning. So um, just trust me that these cops are doing great work. Um, recently, they kind of go between this district and like checkers all the way down to checkers and McKee, if you know that King area, like that whole area. And recently one of my officers was riding in a two person car. They see a car at three in the morning, two 2.30 in the morning. Um, immediately they're thinking like catalytic converter. That's what people are doing at that time. That's when they do it. So they get behind the car, they go to pull it over for normal stuff. The car takes off, pulls over and three people get out and run. The first officer tackles the driver who's holding a full rifle. Um, my officer is like this big Idaho, big guy. <laughs> he caught him, he's fast. He arrested him, got the gun. The second officer kept running. They ran, I think, for about a quarter of a mile. That's a good run. And that second officer, don't tell the first one, is probably in the best shape on the department. His name is Jesse Gifford. Um, and I love the kid. Uh, he's like my son, um, except better looking. But the um, Jesse runs after him. The guy has a backpack. He throws the backpack and keeps running. And Jesse catches him. Huge fight. Huge, huge fight. Jesse knows how to fight, punches the guy to knock him down to, to overcome his resistance. The guy goes to the ground. The guy stands up and says, is that all you got? And it's a big fight. Now, remember, Jesse's by himself now, and this guy is hardened, right? So he, uh, the fight continued. It was a fight for his life. Jesse did win the fight. He did go to the hospital. He broke his middle finger, which he showed me adamantly when I went to visit him that night. Um, and he is back to work already because he wouldn't stay home, no matter what the doctor said, but um, he broke the tip of his finger. Um, but that's the type of people you literally have driving here at night. And I just want to make sure you know, it's not me that's the superstar, um, but I get to watch a front row seat to these great cops that are doing that work. So Jesse, uh, the people that they arrested um, two nights earlier had shot at a Milpitas police officer and gotten away. And we didn't know that, right? But Jesse didn't know that. So the that was the gun probably that was used to shoot at the officer. And we, we ended up taking him into custody. Uh, tremendous amount of patrol checks on Barry Essa and Sierra Road. I found that most of the patrol checks are happening Tuesday through Saturday. So if you don't want to get a ticket, Tuesday and th through Saturday, between four o'clock and 11 o'clock at night. That's when um, they've had free patrol time. Remember, you usually have four officers out here. So that's when they'll have free patrol time to do proactive work. And I will tell you, um, as being a cop a little while, uh, it's a gift to have officers that use their time to be proactive in our city. Some cities, cops hide behind Target and they watch Netflix. Um, they don't do that here. There's this, it's always been that way here, but there's this push now, and I don't know what it is, but the leadership, I don't know if I count myself as part of that, but the leadership on the department, uh, there's this drive toward excellence that I've never seen before. And I'm trying to be a leader in that as well. And I see it reflecting in the way the officers are working. We had a weird couple of years, right? Weird things were happening on our department. But I think um, we've ironed a lot of that out. And I just see this, this um, camaraderie and this, this winning mentality to do better in the community. Those are the people that are working with you and for you. So just know that we care about you. We're out here for you. We did a big Berryessa walk recently at the shopping center. Very successful. The um, number one complaint from every business on all four corners was the unhoused, which is the same complaint I get from every community group, right? So we hear you. And what I did to address that, you'd had a number of robberies. I think I spoke about the, the very tail in the last meeting at Barry SN Capital. 
but the robberies uh, were happening more near Safeway right there. And so I have cops coming in on different days, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. They're volunteering to come in before their shift on midnights. Those nine o'clock officers, they come in early, like at five or six in the afternoon, and they just drive around and do enforcement. And they aren't giving out stickers. They might they have them, but they're not there to give out stickers. They're there to check on the quality of life for you and make it better. I see a big difference already. But um, at some point, we have to we have to do something, right, to make it safer. So if you see the cops out there, the community has been emailing me, the businesses, they are they see the cops out there a lot. I think it's making a difference. You know, the Safeway doesn't have shopping carts. You've been to that Safeway there? They don't have them because they get stolen and they, um, they're working on a system. But when I heard that, I was like, what is going on? Like, I had no idea. So um, I think you're gonna feel different. Hopefully you feel safer when you're there, but I'm not perfect um, and I have limited people, but their souls, if it went by that alone, it would solve every problem in the city. So just uh, know that we're working hard for you. Are there any concerns or questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, yes, um, you were tell you were mentioning that a lot of uh, drivers were cited during the uh, um, the rally, etc. What happens when they're cited? Uh, do you go after and collect money? What amount um, uh, is due? Great question. So um, most of the people cited for the sideshow were cited for a spectator ordinance, which is a municipal code that the police department worked with the city to, to promote. And it, that code has now gone through the country. Most big cities have the same code that we wrote. Same with the promoter ordinance. Um, but for the, the 720 citations, most of those people, which are juveniles and adults, are going to be cited. If it's their first time, they might get community service. There might be a financial option. Depends on what their life is like before that day. Um, if it's the second or third time they've been cited for it, the judges care. And if I have to go to court and stand there and tell them what it, how it impacts our city, I will do that. And they know it. I've done it. And the judges care. So... Um, Promoter, uh, they're not going to go to jail the rest of their life. I don't think they should. Well, I, I'm going to say that. I don't think they should. I don't think they should because um, I get why they're there, right? That's kind of the new form of the cruise that used to happen in our city, right? But it's much more aggressive and people get hurt and it attracts out of town folks that bring guns and bring. And if you're driving down a Piedmont and you're stuck in the middle of that sideshow, you could be there for hours. And if they do the enforcement, where they get everybody in, you could be there for hours. You know, you're not, you probably won't get a ticket, but you, uh, you can see how that can impact your life, right? And it impacts everything. It just has a, has, it's like glue in our city when that happens. So yeah, there, there, there is fines. I don't think of it as raising money for the city. That's not what I, I could, I do care about the city making money. I get it. That's not what I care about at all though when it comes to sideshows. I care about a 15 year old kid, like my kids, they're that age. Um, going out to watch the sideshow and they get hit by the car, which happens and they die. It happens in other cities a lot more than we know down here. It's happening. Um, I, I see people crashing into each other or they're trying to flee because they think the police are coming and they're driving over your front lawn and then they run into your house, that type of thing. So even though it's just a ticket and it isn't the end of the world, I think um, it, it, number one, it notifies parents, which I think is very powerful. A lot of parents think their kids are going to meetups, that's what they're called, to go hang out with their friends at in and out that type of thing. Well, they are, they're meeting up there, but then they're jumping in on the sideshow and it's super dangerous for them. And I don't wanna to go to another parent's house like I did recently and tell them that their kid was killed, yeah. right? We can do better than that. So what the cops are doing is important, I promise you, even though it sounds like just tickets, it isn't a big fine. That's not what the, the goal is. The goal is to change behavior and keep it from happening in our city. Captain, the uh, question is, when does it come to a point when the department's allowed to confiscate the car, impound the car? Yeah, I wish, I wish we could do that all the time. The cars that are involved in the sideshows are, are usually the ones we take. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, the ones that we can catch, right? Okay. We don't catch them all. Uh, we, have a, we have good tactics, and, and they're, they're the safest thing for people and for the police, which are people. Um, but also when the cars flee from us, we do, um, we identify that sometimes we don't even have to have license plates. Sometimes we can identify the car based on whatever these cops are using now technology. 
and they will go after the car on another day. So you heard that I towed, I think 17 cars, it was nine plus eight. So 17, um, two different rounds. But if a car fled from, I haven't given you those numbers yet because those numbers are gonna be significant. It might be another 10 or 15 cars. And we do it while the car is parked in their driveway and they don't even know that we know about it. We go and tow it and then we knock on the door when the car's on the tow truck and we say, hey, we're taking your car for 30 days for um, evading a police officer. We get a warrant basically for the car. That's what we do. Yeah, I, I can just share. I was a correctional deputy for 27 years here. So I have a lot of experience dealing with that, with how many young men came into jail that were facing manslaughter murder charges for just doing donuts in parking lots, racing each other down the streets. So all those lives, theirs, the lives they took, their families, and now themselves, they're going to seven to 11 years manslaughter and their life will never be the same. So I, I totally understand that, how important that is from what I witnessed. And um, as a fellow officer, I'd like to, you're doing an outstanding job. Thank you so much. And credit to these wonderful officers and you and the department allowing them to be proactive. I thank you. Well, thank you. And thank you for your service. I'm glad I never met you in the jail. But the, uh, but I, um, I could stay up here all night if you want to keep, I mean, I'm kidding. But no, thank you though. It's, it's a, you know, I've been on for 27 years, about the same as you, right? So I have, uh, I've done that. I've, I've done the proactivity and it's been a gift. It's why I never leave this department. And it's really the biggest recruiting incentive I have is you don't have to ask your boss to do everything on this department. We will train you and we will trust you until you mess up. <laughs> Thank you, sir. used to race on this drag race on the street down in Southern California. Not me, but the older kids. But uh, what they finally did in the community, they put in a drag, excuse me, a drag strip where the kids could go out, register, they check the cars out, and then they could race in a controlled environment. Yeah. Now, I personally don't like the sideshow stuff. It happens by our house a lot. But Maybe we could think of some place where there's a controlled environment that you can't stand next to cars doing, and they can do all of their sideshow stuff with maybe controlled crowd where they can sit and watch or stand and watch where there's no fatalities or injuries sure. or whatever. So just a thought. Yeah, there, there are cities that do that. Stockton has a place. Um, Merced, I believe, has a place which is why there's so many people come from those cities because they have those cars already souped up. Um, definitely, I've thought about it. I just didn't win the Powerball the other day. If I would have won the two billion, maybe I could make it happen. But um, there is something because, for example, those two cities, Stockton and Merced, many people that were busted on Saturday were from Stockton and Merced because their cars are souped up, right? So why are they coming here? because there's a draw, there's the thrill, excuse me, the thrill of that law breaking, right? And I, um, I don't know any be better way to say it other than there's something about taking over an intersection and feeling empowered and it's bigger than, and they don't wanna pay money to do it, right? You gotta pay to do the, the drags. It's not a lot, but you know, for those young kids. So I, I'm open to anybody if that ends up becoming a proposal, but. I've definitely thought about it two years ago, and I just don't know how that would happen in our city. Um, I don't want them using Monterey Highway as a drag strip, which is what happens, you know, and we all know that that road can be dangerous. You know, we have enough with drunk drivers out there, right? And this is all happening at the same time. So thank you. Yes, ma'am. So on the Noble, not Noble, um, Piedmont and Penitentia, I'm sure you're aware, there's a whole encampment underneath that bridge. Mm -hmm. so are there any steps being taken to maybe give people eviction notices? Yeah. Because when I go to that 7-Eleven, sometimes after dark, it's like the night of the living dead, where people yep. come up from under there and then go into the 7-Eleven and you know, the poor guys there, I think they've had the windows busted out twice. So it's a little concerning because we also have all our kids 
right. I walk home from school there. And um, you know, I was just always curious what's gonna happen. Yeah, thank you. I, I can't claim to know how to solve that one, but I will tell you, I am super limited as a, as a police officer on what I can do with unhoused people today. It used to be different. I used to be able to go up and say, you know, move along. You're, you're trespassing on Valley Waters property, right? And I would act on for them. I can't do that anymore. And uh, even, even um, if you don't mind me saying Valley Water, they, they, are, they are limited on what they can do. If you're going to move someone in our city, you better have a place to put them and they have to be willing to go there. So that is another limit. And the third is um, a movement now, instead of abating homelessness, homeless camps, is they shrink them down. Last I was told it was a 12 by 12. And um, so what they'll do is shrink down my encampment if I'm the unhoused there, and then you'll leave and then I will spread it all back out again over time. Because accumulation is a big problem, right? Fortunately, we're doing the trash thing. It is, it is real. I, um, I do not want to tell you that I can clear out an encampment there. I can tell you that I do know the right entities that will work on it. And um, it is everywhere. Every school, it is everywhere. And I live here too, right? But don't take no for an answer. And I'm not giving you a no. I'm just saying, let's work together. And it's, it's great. I can get a hold of homeless concerns at sanjoseca.gov. I can do that for you all day long. But when it comes from you, or your neighbors, and you, you describe the things you're seeing, then that's how, um, that's how it can implement change better. And I will support them, and I will support you. So uh, I think you know how to get a hold of me. But um, yeah, if you can just email me, and I'll make sure that I get you the right things. And as we see it and go along, this next thing I can do is patrol checks more at 7-Eleven. It's always busy there, right? It's at, at nighttime. Uh, the police go there all the time because they have a bathroom. So we go there all the time. Um, but we do see the same thing you're seeing, kind of that zombie look, right? And the patrol checks are important because it lets them know we're around. Yes, sir. Just a piece of information that may be helpful for you, you may be able to leverage. That area underneath the, the over, that bridge is San Jose owned, not Water District. Okay. I don't know if that gives you any additional leverage, but I was work, I was talking to some of the staff for the Water District, and they had their map out, and they're looking at it and going, that's, that's San Jose. Yeah. And so... I don't know if that gives you more leverage or not. Uh, I, I still handle it the same way. The difference is I can't um, yell at different owners because <laughs> we're the owners, right? But um, thank you. Yeah, it would, it would still go through the same process of the homeless concerns team. And it's a group called Beautify SJ. They kind of work hand in hand. Beautify SJ will come out to the encampments and pick up the garbage. Like they give them bags and pick up, like garbage, like garbage day that we're all used to. We take it for granted. But uh, if we don't do that, then the encampments really become diseased and even more dirty and they, they pollute our water even more, which is a big deal to me. So I'll take some type of trash service versus nothing, but um, I know that isn't the answer that you want. And I, I don't have a perfect answer. I bet I would be quite wealthy if I did, but the, um, I do care about the homeless concern. It's a big deal to me. You want me to sing a song? What do you want? I've been working on a new one. <laughs> no, thank you for your time. If there's any questions, I'll hang around here. I know I've been talking a lot, so thank you. We, we are very proud of uh, the, the San Jose Police Department. I think uh, it's been on the news what happened Saturday night. It was on Saturday night, Sunday, tonight again, showing how all the cars were stacked up and didn't know they were being surrounded. And, you know, Saturday night I was cheering and my husband got out of bed. He says, what are you cheering about? I said, this is so great. You know, and then, of course, people in Oakland are saying, how come we can't do that? You know, but that special ordinance about people um, observing, it, that's really made a big difference, I think. So thank you again for all your service and all you, all you do. So, okay. Where are we? Okay. Uh, not on Noble Update. Do we have anything different or new? Okay. Yeah. Um, I have a loud voice, so, pardon? Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, 
Okay, um, we heard some re really positive words tonight. Zanker, an alternative site's been selected or proposed, looked at. I've heard Penitentiary Reach 2 slash Perk Pond slash Noble Park is a park, which is true. Um, we are still persevering for official um, word, uh, official vote saying that it's off limits for any uh, development um, for emergency housing. And most importantly, recognition that it has permanent park status. We really want this official because we were all here in 2017 and we're doing this fight again. Um, we want to avoid having to stress out the community in five more years. My update is on the Silicon Valley Law Group. As you know, uh, the community contributed funds that to be used to uh, obtain legal services in this fight. The law group has performed significant and substantial research on environmental and government laws and rules and regulations. They have read through the master plans um, for the area that uh, includes Penitentiary Reach 2. On November 9th, the uh, law firm, Silicon Valley Law Group, issued a letter to the mayor and to the city council members. And the letter lays out an extensive argument for permanently protecting the site from any and all development and requests that the city formally designate Penitentiary Reach 2 as a park. Um, one thing that really stuck out to me on this letter was decades ago, the park was explicitly included for park development in the county's 1977 Penitentiary Creek Park, Park Chain Master Plan. And the use was confirmed in the city's 2002 Penitentiary Creek Reach 2 Master Plan. It is designated as open space, parkland, and habitat in the city's general plan. So um, again, until we do get that final vote, which uh, apparently is going to be on November 29th, uh, the city council is to vote on this uh, excluding or including uh, the noble site for emergency housing. Uh, we're definitely hoping for a no vote. Um, the next city council meeting, which many of us have attended over the past few months, uh, to speak our minds. The next city council meeting is tomorrow at three o'clock for anybody who's interested in attending. Um, I think you have a minute that you can speak. We really want to encourage everyone to not give up until all of this has been official and finalized. That's it. Any questions? Yeah, thank you, Valerie. Yeah, we are gonna, we have, we have put out there for all the community and the not a noble community to be at city council tomorrow at three o'clock. Once again, like what Valerie said, we did good as a community in bringing it back to vote. It didn't mean we won, we brought it back to vote. They're gonna vote again. They may vote again, eight to two. So it sounds promising that it looks like they're finding other spots. We are, well, at least we got it back on November 29th. We have it on the agenda at city council. There will be a vote. So we need to show down, spread the word. We need to get as many people down as we can tomorrow at three o'clock, have our last chance to say our piece about our park because they're gonna vote again on the 29th. Once again, it's a vote again. We got it, we got the re-vote. And people have gotten the idea that it was over. What we got over was we got it stalled to get a re-vote. So just pass that on everybody, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, Deb. Wally.
Thank you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thanks, Valerie. Yeah. I think it's important. Like she said, it, it has to be in writing and in stone somewhere that this is a park. So we, I, I admire you to keep going. You've done a lot of work already. So that's why BCAC was, a, you know, really working with you guys too. So we're very proud to do that. All right, my last item. <clears throat> Nominations to the BCAC board for the 2023 uh, year coming up. Our election will be uh, in De at the December meeting, but this is November and we are uh, obliged to take um, recommendations from our members that are present here. Uh, if you would like to join our board, we meet this third Monday after the second Monday's general meeting. So we try to keep our meetings to an hour and a half maximum. So that would be your duty and to try to be there for those both meeting, the regular meeting and the board meeting. The current uh, board uh, would be pleased to continue serving for you. And we do have a couple of volunteers because we had some openings. And um, let me see, Sandra Harrison K. Let me raise your hand. That's good. So everybody will see. And then Robert McKinnon. McKinnon. I have to remember that. Uh, they both volunteered. So we're pleased to, to know that. If anybody else would like to volunteer to be on the board, you can nominate somebody else, but you have to have asked them first. So they don't su be surprised. So is there anybody that else that would like to be on the board or nominate someone? Okay, so the, I will ask you once more in December if anybody would uh, like to volunteer to be come forward. Otherwise, we'll have a, a recommendation for you to vote on at that time. Okay, our next general membership meeting is uh, December 12th at seven o'clock here, hopefully. And we do have a BCAC board meeting on the 21st. We just have to decide where we're going to have it because we can't have it our usual place. Um, are there any other announcements? Anybody would like to? Oh, I know, I, I know one because Cita is going to yell at me if I don't. Uh, we need cookies for the December 12th meeting. Is anybody willing to volunteer cookies? Oh, oh Roxanne? Oh, good. Good. Bring the treats for that night. Yeah, and the parents will come. You know, yeah, it's exciting, and that's that's some. Well, music has just always been a part of of uh, Berryessa School District, and they do a wonderful job. We just have wonderful music teachers. We even though some have retired, they've been replaced by wonderful teachers. So. Um, we have a lot to be proud of in this district. So good place to live, raise your children. I did that three times. <laughs> All right, I don't have anything else. Oh, I'm sorry, Wally. Oops, wait, Wally, you need the microphone. Uh, limit on your taxes, property taxes for your house, it failed. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't like public speaking. Anyway, Prop 13 still with us, mm -hmm. but there's a movement in the state Senate to do a constitutional amendment 
to yeah. eliminate it. So that's something to be prepared for. I have had two issues that I wanted to contact politicians lately, and I went to the registrar of voters to try and get the right phone number to call. Mm. The phone numbers were wrong. So the best way to contact the politicians is to either Google the office if you know it, or Google the person's name. In December, there will be two new represent, there are two people running for the District 10 Senate position. Both ladies, um, you might contact them ahead of time so they're prepared for it when they get sworn in in December. But you may very well have to Google their names, especially since they haven't been elected yet. So that's it. Thank you. Prop 13 is uh, way back when, and it affects people that that had bought a home at at that period of time. So our taxes are, are actually different than new people coming in by new homes. So, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that information. <laughs> Second, all right, all in favor? Yay, go have cake and, no, no, coffee and cookies. Thanks for coming tonight.